Hey there, welcome to Lima Bean Crafting. Today's video is going to be all about busy books or quiet books as some people call them. So if you like these couple pages that you're seeing here, make sure you stick around. I'm going to be sharing a whole lot more with you and telling you how I made them. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing two different busy books, or sometimes they're called quiet books, that I have made to use with my daughter Aubrey and any future kids that Juan and I have whether we're at church or any really place that I need her attention to be focused and her to be quiet. So let's go ahead and check these out. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and sell these books on Etsy. I've seen them ranging anywhere above $60 per book. I've seen some people sell just like one page in the book for $15. And each of these books has about 10 pages each. And like I said, I made two of them. So I'm gonna take you through both of these books. All of the supplies that I use to make these books can be found either on Amazon, in Walmart, or Hobby Lobby. I'll try to link as many products below based on what I used. And if I can't find a link, I will at least list the items that I used in assembling both of these books if you are interested in making them for yourself. Now I made two different types of books. Now they're both busy books or quiet books like people call them but one of these books has no removable pieces and I'm intending on using this with Aubrey when she's about two years old and kind of learns to respect the pieces and not really try to tug at things that are glued. And then the second book has removable pieces and this book I plan on using with her when she's at least like three years old and won't take a piece out and then misplace it. I really want her to teach her to respect the pieces so that these books last a really long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the first book that I plan on using with her and then we'll move on to the one with removable pieces. So both of my books have little rings here that are easily openable. They're like binder rings and I wanted to do it like this so that if I wanted to, I could take out pages if Juan and I are blessed with more children and they are then old enough to share the book with each other. I can give one page to each kid and it's not tied to just being like one solid book. The other thing is I have a designated front page and a designated end page and we can close the books using this little clasp thing that I think I got at Hobby Lobby just to kind of keep it all together so that the pages won't fly everywhere. So the first page that I have in this book is just a little sweater with a zipper. My aunt helped me by sewing this together and then I glued the little sweater onto the felt background. The next two pages are working with numbers. So I have strings and on each consecutive string I have one additional bead. So the first string only has one bead and then two and the numbers are labeled there as well. I used puffy paints and these knots that I made, I had to use a little technique. When I was in a stage in my life where I was making homemade rosaries, this was the knot that I used when I was making that. So I just figured I would use that same technique for these pages. So the first page had numbers one through five and the second page has numbers six through 10. And this is just kind of to help the little kids work with their numbers and they could move the beads from left to right or right to left, they can separate them. We can talk about when they're a little bit older, we can talk about division and you know, if we break the 10 into five different groups, then each group will have two beads each. And so that's like 10 divided by five is equal to two. And so that can easily be seen with the beads on this page. Now, obviously a two-year-old is not going to have that conversation, but it's something that I can discuss with Aubrey when she's even older and maybe she's helping one of her younger siblings with these beaded pages. The next page is something that I'm actually really proud of. I kind of came up with this idea on my own without being inspired with something I saw online. And so what I did was I alternated colors and shapes. So I made a square in both yellow and green, a circle in both red and yellow, a triangle in blue and red, a star in green and purple, and a heart in purple and blue. And I put one of each shape on one side of the page. And my intent for doing this was that these little clasps can actually be connected 
and we can choose to connect them based on if they have the same shape or if they have the same color. So right here, I'm actually attaching each of the little links based on the same shape. So I'm attaching both the squares together, the circles, and so on. But if I wanted to, I could have attached the yellow square with the yellow circle and completed the page. There's not going to be anything that's like you, you can't complete it if you choose one or the other. But I really like this page because it offers kind of two different options and it allows for a discussion on shapes and colors. And it also helps, again, with your little ones practicing with these little clasps. And the next page was something that I just wanted to have for Aubrey and any future kids so that she can practice working with like a belt buckle, uh, one of these little buckles where you have to press down the button and slide it through to open up the purse, um, as well as again, one of these other little clasps that were on the previous page. The next page is just two little shoes. I have the shoelaces threaded and my intention is to help Aubrey with tying her shoelaces we can keep one of these shoelaces tied and untie the other shoe so that you know she can kind of see what the end result's going to look like. We can both do it together. Um, so I wanted to have two shoes on this page and not just one. The next little page is to practice with overalls. I don't know how often Aubrey is going to actually have to deal with these things, but if they come up in her life, she will know how to work them using this page. And the last page in this busy book, aside from the very end page, I just made this little maze and I had to draft out what I wanted it to be like before I just started using puffy paint. And there's a glitter background mainly because I initially used glitter puffy paint and then I tried to do something artsy and it didn't quite work and it kind of smeared and then I was like, well, might as well just paint this puffy paint all over. And it kind of helps because it gives it kind of a little stiff, stiffer feel. And I did two coats of the puffy paint on the maze walls so that it would be even more raised. So you can kind of just trace your finger along and not go over a wall as easily as you would if I just did one layer. And finally, the last page is just the capital letters of the alphabet. I did two layers of puffy paint again on this, and I like how then we can go ahead and trace the letters with our fingers and kind of learn the effort case alphabet that way. So the next book is the book with removable pieces. Now again, I don't plan on using this until Aubrey can appreciate the pieces and not just misplace them. So in this first page, I have a little vegetable themed page <laughs> um, where I have garlic and ginger, radish, potato, beet and carrot. And each of these pieces can be removed from their little pocket and put back. And so we can talk about the differences in each of these foods and what they look like and the different colors that they had. I tried to pick vegetables or foods that looked a little bit different so that they're not like all the same and like the same color. And I think I was successful in this page. The next page is this little color wheel. Now the center part of the color wheel is glued down. It is secure, but the pieces that have the colors labeled are removable and they actually have this tiny little magnet on the inside. And what I did was in between the white page and this gray circle as a background, I just put a little sheet of metal. And I wanna say that I got this metal just from some scrap lying around my house. It was very flexible and I could easily cut it. And that is what this little magnet sticks to. Now I've kind of rearranged the colors here, but we can remove all of these pieces and have Aubrey or any future children go ahead and match the color up with the color little wedge. And we can talk about how to spell each color and so on. Now this next page is something I'm actually really proud of. I think it turned out really cute. I made these little triangles with uh, glitter hot glue to kind of make like a waffle cone. And then I cut out little pieces that look like ice cream scoops and I used puffy paint to make little sprinkles on top. And I did this in vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. And then what I did was I took a little piece of Velcro and put one of the pieces down on, like on the actual felt. And this is like the softer side of the Velcro. And then I have the harder side of the Velcro on the back of each of these little ice cream scoops. And so I did three different cones so that 
the kids could play around with like an all chocolate ice cream cone or rotate. And the way that I have it currently set up is that each of the scoops is in a different location on each of these little ice cream cone little desserts. I also cut out something that resembles a cherry and I glued it to the felt so that each of these little three scooped ice cream cones had a cherry on top. The next page is supposed to be a washing machine and we just have a bunch of little clothes that I cut out with the different felt pieces that I had. And on the door is actually like a plastic bag so that we can just open up the plastic bag and grab out whatever clothes that we want. And there's a reason for this. Now securing this bag to this little door of the washing machine was a bit of a struggle. It probably is not the most sturdy. So this will probably be the piece that falls apart the most often. I probably could have had a different type of bag, but I wanted the plastic look so that it did look like the front of a washing machine. So we'll just have to keep, you know, be careful with this page and respect to the page. Um, but the reason I did this page is after we wash our clothes, we dry them. And I really liked how this page turned out. I have a little clothesline with these little clothes pins from the Dollar Tree and you know, my kiddos can go ahead and pick out their favorite piece of clothing and hang it up on the little clothesline. I feel like I'm saying this throughout this entire book, but I think this is one of my favorite pages in this book. This is probably one of my favorite books out of the two. Now this page, I actually have some little goldfish and these goldfish have magnets in them. Now there's no metal underneath this little lake shaped piece of felt, but there is a little bit of metal in the dark blue area. And that is to help secure the fish there when we're not using the book and they won't fall out everywhere. Originally, this was going to be a little pocket, but I figured, hey, I had some of this metal anyways, I can go ahead and just put the fish there. Looking back, I kind of wish I would have made it into like a little grill or something, you know, after you go fishing, where are you gonna put the fish? You know, you're gonna cook them or you're gonna put them in some type of other container, not another thing of water. So this is one little regret on this page, but, since these guys have a little magnet in them, I just took like a very cheap uh, watercolor paintbrush and glued on a piece of string. And then with that string, I actually, I undid a paper clip and then wrapped it around and like made this type of coil and shaped it in the shape of a hook and managed to secure these guys all together. Now you could probably make something that looks a little bit better, but it turns out that it works just fine and I'm happy with that. So the metal in the paper clip is actually going to catch and attach onto the magnet. So the magnet, is, it's strong enough to go through the hot glue that I used to make this hook, you know, easily touchable with the, with the little kid's fingers and whatnot but the magnet is strong enough to hook on to this little hook and then we can easily remove the little fish and put it uh, on the little metal piece and continue fishing for all of these little goldfish. Now, in order to keep this little hook from flinging around everywhere when the book is being carried, uh, I do have this little pocket for my fishing rod and I put one little magnet down at the bottom so that the hook would stay securely there uh, even when we turn the page and whatnot. Another favorite of mine is this apple picking page. Now I have these little apples that are secured with Velcro onto the little tree. I had to sew the Velcro on both pieces. And I also have this little basket looking thing that has Velcro on one side and you can open it up. And there's more pieces of Velcro. And this is meant to, when you're picking the apples, go ahead and put them in the basket. Before all of the apples were picked, I wanted to make sure that the basket didn't look like some just random thing. Um, and I didn't want it to look empty. So I did kind of cut out a half of an apple and glue it on the main piece of felt so that this apple basket looked like it was semi full, but we could still fill it up some more. The last really interactive page of this busy book was just a little racetrack. I put a little magnet inside the, the tip of the car and put a little piece of metal on the other side of the stop sign so that the magnet would then stick and the car would stay in place parked at the stop sign. 
but it's not strong enough to like, you know, draw you in and make you stop. But I just thought that was an extra little touch that I could add to kind of get the point across that at stop signs, we stop the car, it can stay there and it doesn't move. And the little kids can take the car around and move, maneuver around this little area. I wanted to add the little lake to kind of bring back or, you know, look back on a previous page. I had a little like caution area. Maybe they could think, oh, it's like a parking spot. I don't know and some flowers as well. And the last page of this busy book is then the whole alphabet, but written in lowercase letters. We can again trace these letters. And this is the page that has the little uh, clasp that secures the book and closes and keeps it all together. Like I said with the first book, this book I attached using binder rings as well. So if I have multiple kids or if I'm with my sister and all of her kids, I can kind of split up the book and have everyone entertained with one page and then we can all rotate. So I really do recommend if you make this for yourself that you use these little binder clips or binder rings, I guess, so that your book is not just one book, can't be taken apart because that means that you either have to have two kids close together and they'll probably argue and fight over one page or you can't share at all. And this allows you to kind of happily please everybody that you are using the book with. The other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, I used these little metal eyelets. Now these were pretty easy to use. I was a little intimidated at first. Like I said, I'm crafty, but I don't know like how to use a bunch of different supplies. So these eyelets um, are li these little metal pieces. There's two pieces that you have to then put together. And if you're new like me, maybe you would be intimidated by this as well. But pretty much all I did was I took a hole punch and I punched a hole in the felt. And then with the two eyelet pieces, I, you know, fed in the piece that had the little prong sticking up through the felt attach the other side, then you have a little tool and you hammer it down. And I was able to, you know, get past my fear. And I do really like that um, I went out and bought a few more so that I could go ahead and put eyelets on each page. I really think that it makes the page a little bit sturdier. And I'm not worried about these little hooks pulling through just the felt or as, I, as you can maybe see, I doubled up on the felt to try to make it a little bit stronger, but the eyelets definitely add, I think, an elevated look to the page. It makes it look a little bit more professionally done, and it makes it so that I'm not too worried that the book's gonna fall apart. Now, I also use these eyelets on the little shoe tying page as well, and that was my initial exposure to the eyelets, and then I decided to go ahead and do them on every page, and I highly recommend that, especially if you guys are using these little binder links. I think that will be really helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, took some inspiration from it. If you plan on making this yourself, let me know in the comments below what page you're excited to make the most or if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, comment something that you liked about it down below, and we'll catch you in the next video.